Hello, kia ora, g'day. I'm Philip Duncan from Weatherwatch TV on YouTube with your December Climate Watch update recorded on Monday, the 1st of December. Let's have a look at the air pressure map as we go into the start of December. Uh, this is the misery index. It shows very simplistically where it's cold, where it's hot, and those with the dark shading where the weather is temperate for this time of the year. So we've seen a lot of the blue to the south over November, uh, been especially in the southeast corner of Australia and the very lower part of the South Island, dropping temperatures in those areas. But most other places have actually enjoyed temperatures above average. And some of these high pressure zones northeast of New Zealand and east of the country dragging down some of that heat and humidity. Now La Nina is officially here. The interesting thing is though, the conditions um, that you use to measure La Nina have been around since September. It needs to be measured consistently for a few weeks for the Bureau to announce it. And that box has now been ticked. And so uh, just because it's now announced doesn't mean there's any sort of sudden dramatic change up here because the conditions have already formed. But we will be monitoring low pressure zones uh, northeast of Australia and north of New Zealand over the next month or two. For now, there's no big dramatic La Nina change, but we will be monitoring it very closely because we might see some changes going into this month. So here are the main climate drivers. We'll start with La Nina, officially here now. Um, and like I say, been around though since late September, the way you measure it. So the Bureau of Meteorology expects it to be fairly short-lived and it might even be gone back to neutral again by the start of next year at some point. So it's not a very strong, powerful La Nina. And in other words, we may not really notice it much, at least not to begin with this month, although I certainly think it's producing some warmer airflows into New Zealand. On the other side of Australia, over the Indian Ocean, the Indian Ocean dipole still negative, but it's weakened quite a lot in November and is rapidly returning back to neutral again. So that just sort of lowers the chances of tropical lows and rainmakers in northern and western parts of Australia. And then you've got Sam in the Southern Ocean. Um, this is a very tricky thing to, to forecast because the weather is so chaotic south of Australia, south of New Zealand um, at any given time of the year. At, and this year it's especially um, unsettled. And there could be a sign that we're going into a more unsettled phase over the next couple of weeks. Some of the long range maps certainly suggest where there are some very big storms south of New Zealand. So the uh, other climate highlights in the marine area, sea surface temperatures around Australia, warmer than average waters across much of the Australian region. And in New Zealand, it's mostly at the top of the North Island and around the Chatham Islands. That's where we've got a strong or severe heat wave. And obviously the, the warmer the sea is, once you've got a low pressure system over it or some thunderstorms, that makes it uh, more likely to produce heavier rain. And that's why we monitor those sea surface temperatures. The positive, uh, the positive side of it is it's great for swimming. If you like warm water, uh, the top of the North Island is the place to be. So where do we measure the Indian Ocean Dipole and La Nina? Well, La Nina is measured here, Nino 3.4. That is well northeast of New Zealand. It's north of Tahiti. That's the area we're monitoring for that. And then over here, this is where we measure the Indian Ocean Dipole. So that just gives you an understanding of where we measure these climate drivers. So this is the La Nina graph. Now this goes back to 2010, the ups and downs. El Nino's up here, La Nina in the blue. So where are we at the moment? We are only just into La Nina. So obviously we've seen, you know, much stronger La Ninas over the last 15 years. At the moment, we are pretty close to neutral. That's why there is no big dramatic change expected to our weather pattern, at least not in the next week or two. As we go to the IOD, similar uh, map going back to 2021, though not quite as far back, the ups and downs of that. So it's been down a long way. It's been a significant negative IOD. We saw tropical cyclone FINA being sparked in the last uh, week or two, but look how quickly that is going straight back to neutral at the moment over there. So let's now get into the weather forecast, at least with the air pressure systems to kind, kind of make sense of, of where the rain might be. So rain is most likely in the areas of blue, that is low pressure, makes for more instability and more wet weather. And at this time of the year, a large area of low pressure like this one in the Tasman can change very quickly, even though that looks like a small low. Low pressure zones at this time of the year with the extra heat can see thunderstorms and um, bigger storms forming. So just keep that in mind. High pressure though, north of New Zealand, that is stopping a lot of tropical energy from just dropping down towards us. And the big highs in Australia still in the south, encouraging these colder southerly winds, especially in the southeast corner as we kicked off December 1st, that same high dragging down heat into Western Australia. But this low in the Tasman, this weak one here, this is December 1st, 
Now this is December 3rd. See how quickly a small area of low pressure can suddenly turn into quite a big, big system? Now this may not produce huge amounts of severe weather around all of New Zealand, but heavy rain and strong winds and a few thunderstorms are certainly possible. So I just point that out because I'm only showing you, you know, these, these sort of one day a week snapshot at one moment in time. But I do that to sort of work out the bigger picture of what is driving our weather. And as we go into the second week, this is the reason why I'm still saying La Nina may not sort of make a sudden dramatic show up at your place because this is the invisible brick wall that separates the stormy stuff down here over the Southern Ocean and the tropical energy forming northeast of, of New Zealand, north of uh, Tahiti and around the Fiji uh, areas in the Solomon Islands. So there is a low pressure zone certainly up there. It's affecting northern parts of Australia and Western Australia as well. But the high pressure belt is kind of keeping the wet weather from the tropics away, but also limiting these big storms. You know, this is a lot of low pressure south of Australia. This is why the uh, SAM is pointing towards negative as we go into this month, because those windy westerlies are going to surge northwards again over Tasmania, over parts of New Zealand. But the high here out to the east of New Zealand is very La Nina-like, because it, it pushes eastwards and it kind of like goes, hey, come down to, the, to New Zealand, and it drags down this tropical airflow. So that's what you see here, a humid tropical nor'easter. So we're in a sort of a halfway mark between La Nina and the stormy stuff that's produced a more spring-like spring for the southeast corner of Australia in particular, but also for New Zealand. So that is the second week of December. And our third map, and the final one, because um, forecasts beyond this point aren't that accurate, sort of lock in, but what you sort of if you're trying to work out week four, you look at what's happening on the left-hand side of the screen and just imagine what it looks like as it drifts eastwards. That's not the perfect way of doing it, but it's one of the ways of doing it. And um, so you can see we've still got that long belt of high pressure still separating Southern Ocean storms like these ones and tropical lows. And there are three tropical lows showing up here in the middle of December. Very La Nina-like to be seeing that. So we'll have to wait and see what happens with this high pressure belt in the southern half of Australia, over the Tasman and the North Island of New Zealand to work out what happens in the second half of the month. At the moment, it looks as though those highs will continue on, keeping the two worlds separated. But it means we're going to have a spring-like weather pattern for New Zealand, but with summer heat. So what I mean by that is cold front still passing through, still a bit windy at times and a little bit unsettled and the wind changing direction. But a lot more heat coming out of the tropics or subtropics for parts of New Zealand. And I think we'll see that increasing in Australia as well as we go through. Soil moisture maps, um, look, the top of the North Island certainly wetter than it was last month. That's the end of uh, October versus last week, late November. And that does not include all the heavy rain that fell on the last day of November around northern parts of New Zealand. But the drying out areas, eastern parts of the North Island, around Canterbury, and this one zone between Taranaki and Waitomo, also uh, pretty dry, although, again, that doesn't catch a potential rain that has just fallen. So some areas are getting wetter, and others are getting drier as we go into the month, which also kind of backs up what I mean about it being a spring-like pattern. Um, sorry, Australia, the Bureau of Meteorology's new website wasn't working today, so we can't show you the um, root soil moisture maps for Australia this time around. The New Zealand Drought Index, this is where we were at the end of October. This is where we are at the end of November. So that drought index is showing more of the eastern side of the country highlighted than it did just a month ago. So those windy westerlies of spring certainly showing up. Sea surface temperatures, as we mentioned before, warmer than average around large parts of Australia, but the storms in the south have kept sea surface temperatures lower around parts of South Australia, Tassie and Victoria. Um, and the cyclone up here might have churned up the sea a wee bit, um, making temperatures a bit lower there. And then you've got warmer than average around the Coral Sea, the tropical islands and New Zealand, especially the top part of New Zealand, where those sea surface temperatures are making for marine heat waves in the strong to severe area for the top of the North Island and around the Chatham Islands. Those are the places to go for a swim if you want the warmer seas. Elsewhere though, normal, which is really good to see all that green. Lastly, let's get into the rainfall. So the large dry areas, Western Australia in the southern half, South Australia in the least populated areas. There's still a few showers further southwards, although not much if you think that's two weeks worth 
you're in that blue shading. So Australia's not really seeing a huge amount of rain. On the New Zealand side, west coast rain, again, more spring-like showers all around the North Island, bringing some rain relief there. And you can see this line of very wet weather up to the north there. Those are signs of us going into the wet season, but also some signs of La Nina over here in the Pacific. So just quickly, here is the Australian rainfall for the next 16 days, pretty quick animation. Not a huge amount of rain falling around Australia. The usual thunderstorms, um, some of those in the east as well, but a lot large dry areas certainly coming in and the westerly lean to the weather um, noticeable there around Tassie. Let's have a look at New Zealand next 16 days. And again, low pressure moves through this week, then more westerlies coming through. You see some life up here in the tropics, but with those high pressure belts coming through and sort of elbowing the rainmakers away. Some of that tropical La Nina rain stays north of New Zealand. I always say this, it's not a switch that flicks and suddenly it's all hot, humid and raining every day. A lot of the media outlets in New Zealand do that a lot. I don't really know why. Um, but that westerly lean shows up here, that spring light westerly with you know maybe 300, 400 millimetres for the west coast. But some parts of uh, Canterbury, like around Christchurch, may only get five millimetres unless you get a thunderstorm. So. It is a bit of a messy pattern. That's not always a bad thing. Here is the 16 day animation. I'm gonna put this up after I've stepped off the screen so I'm not blocking it for you, but basically you'll get see, you'll see what I'm talking about with these high pressure zones coming through, sort of separating the rain, which is up in the tropics with La Nina and Southern Ocean storms as well. So we've got variety. Variety is usually a good thing, unless you're camping, and then it's not. When you're camping, you want it to be consistent usually. So we'll uh, take another look at things as we get closer to Christmas. This is our final uh, proper Climate Watch update for 2025. We'll have a brief one around New Year's Eve. Otherwise, that is all from me for this month as far as the climate drivers are concerned. Uh, have a good day. We'll catch you again next time I see you.